So, all right. So, for everyone who has uh, server details already, everybody else is going to get them soon. Kunal's just spinning up a bunch of servers on this and sending uh, you know details to everyone on that list. But for everyone else, go to within the within Chrome, there's this thing that lets you SSH into uh, servers. SSH is just a way to sort of log into server and control what's going on. So just search for Chrome Web Store. And there's much, much, much better ways to do SSH, but it's just much easier for this actorial if we use the thing from Chrome because cross-platform and all that good stuff. So search for SSH and this first one right here, and even even for everyone who uh, doesn't have their, the details of their server yet, you can you can do this right now too. Um, install this SSH plugin. So bam bam, and it should take very little time. And it shows up right here for me. It might show up somewhere else for you. Once you open it up, you sort of get this uh, interface, and this interface lets you specify a username. Everybody's username on their server is going to be root uh, right when you spin up the instance. And then you're going to have to type in the IP address of uh, the server. So uh, let me let me grab the IP address of one of these droplets. Um, I'm going to use this one. And actually, I'm going to use another one. No, please don't use Hopgoblin. What's that? Can we use Hopcopter? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So use uh, three. What's that? Don't use anything. Just don't use the instance called three. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So, IP address. Let's paste that into there. For some reason, you have to click in this weird text box to be able to connect. Uh, once we do that, it'll ask us if we're sure we're connecting. And, you know, yes, we're sure. And then password, just sort of copy paste that into here. The way you paste into, into this uh, Chrome plugin is you just right click. And sometimes right click doesn't work. I guess so. Just copy and type it. And once Where? you, Where you? Hmm. this is definitely the password. You're right. Okay, great. So type in this password right here and you log into this IP address. So for everyone who has credentials so far, did everyone get that? Raise your hand if you didn't. Still sending them out. No, I mean if you not if you didn't get the credentials, but if you had the credentials, did you get into the server? Yeah. And if not Okay, great. It should be quite simple. There's nothing complicated about this bit. So just ask you for a password again, and then it'll ask you to create a new password. And you'll be now at a Linux shell on a server, you know, in Fiverr or whatever. Um, for those of you who haven't used Linux before or the Unix command shell, this basically gives you access to lots of internals of the operating system. So there's lots of commands you can use. Uh, there's no way I'm going to go over even 1% of them. So a useful one is ls. ls gives you the all the files in the current directory. So in this command shell, you're sort of in a certain directory, almost like in Windows Explorer. And you can type in commands which run in that directory or you can move around directories. So Right now, there's absolutely nothing here. We can create a file by opening a text editor. The easiest text editor to use 
uh, is nano. So just type in nano and then space and then the name of the file. Let's just call it uh, ABC and then say, you know, uh, just type something and then go control O and that should pop up this little thing in the bottom that says file name to write and it should have the default of, you know, file name you chose when you typed in nano space something and you hit enter. And then if you go ls again, we'll have a file in that directory. So I'm going to go over that again really quick. Uh, if you're already logged in here onto a server, you go nano space name of your file. Let's call it hello.txt. Type in whatever you want to type in. And then hold control and hit O. Control O, and then that'll give us this little pop up in the bottom that says, if you want to write to this file, you just hit enter and it writes there, and then control X exits. Okay, so if we go ls again, now we'll have you know two files. Um, now, to prove that we actually have a server in the sky, what I'm going to do is show you a very simple command you can type at the shell to basically expose uh, the files that are in this current directory to the web. So if you were to go to this IP address in your web browser, you would see you know all these files. So that command. I'll write this in a notepad to write this a bit long. Uh, is python m simple http server space 80. What that means is run python and specifically run this module with all the default settings and uh, host it on port 80. And port 80 is just the default port number for um, hosting a web service. And port is just like, once you have an IP address to identify who you are on the internet, each IP address can have loads and loads of ports, and each port <coughs> specifies a different program running on that port. So if you try to connect on a specific port, you only hit one program, but a program can pick any port that it wants to. The default port for HTTP is 80. So if I run that command here. Can you make it bigger? No, sure. Uh, that explains that. Thank you. Okay. Oh. So now it's uh, it says you know serving HTTP on this. So now if we go to the IP address, and for me that was this right here, and you all, you guys will obviously have your own. Uh, it will give you a little directory listing, uh, which basically shows all the files in that directory. All this stuff that becomes a dot doesn't show up normally when you type in ls, but it's there, so just ignore it. Right at the bottom, you'll see abc and hello.txt, which I created earlier. If I hit abc, uh, for some reason on Windows, it downloads it, but if we go to hello.txt, Windows recognizes txt files, and then you know what I wrote earlier, is up on the internet somewhere, and so you don't even need a you know domain name to host the website if people are willing to just go to an IP address. Uh, okay, so has everyone who didn't have login credentials gotten them yet? No, I can't get. You didn't get the email yet. No, how many people have you sent emails to so far? Uh, everyone except one person. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you right at the end of the list? Um, is it so once more, once you uh, have installed the SSH client, which you can grab again by, so I'll go over this again. So Chrome Web Store, you search for Chrome Web Store, you hit the first link, Search for SSH, 
that gives you this thing right here. You click that, and you install it, and then you launch it. And once you launch it, it'll start out with new connection highlighted. And so in the username, put root. And in the host name, put that IP address that you should have gotten in the email. And then this uh, specifically, this SSH client is really great. If you try hitting connect right now, it doesn't do anything. <coughs> So click here first, and then click connect. Again, you have to click in this text box right here first, and then click connect, and then it'll ask you for a password. And by default, you use the password you got in the email, and then it'll ask you to change it. Just make sure you remember the thing you changed it to. And uh, yeah, so we're back in the server that it's set up, brother. Who's having issues with doing that so far? No, that's what part of the it's password it's like that you just typed in. Yeah, you type in the, the password that you already had earlier. Yeah, the earlier password. Keep saying connection options. Uh, are you sure you're typing in the right IP address? You're just copy pasting it? Is this from the email that you sent me already? No. Send her another email. Uh, well, I, I don't think all of them are done. I just like started them off, so it'll be like. Oh, okay. So if you wait like another twenty or thirty seconds and keep trying, it should work. Okay. So is anyone having any issues, really quick? Okay. I'll help you out a bit. For everyone who's not having issues, we can mess around. If you know anything about Unix or Linux, and if you don't, you can just search online for, I don't know, how to, um, <laughs> that, all right, so text editor, don't use this text editor. Uh, no, don't do this. I'll just remember it. They can't do anything. You can't do anything because you're on SSH and you can't see all the little, you know, uh, what's it called, windows and stuff like that that pop up when you type stuff in. But uh, there's this one cool command called yes, it just prints out Y a bunch of times. Why? The, the letter Y, it just prints out. No, 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 the question why. Oh, okay. <laughs> It, it helps with um, if you have like a application that keeps asking for yes or no. Uh, you go like yes, and then you use like a pipe symbol to put all of the stuff coming out from yes into the other application. So don't worry about that. Uh, mess around with that while your if your server is working, and I'll go around helping everyone who doesn't have that working so far. And so. So, another Are you just here from apps? no, no, that's my discussion. Okay, so <laughs> next up, we're going to download a Twitter API or Twitter library to access the API. Now, uh, some people might have issues with this on their browsers. If you do, just make sure you have the latest Chrome and it should work. Um, so, hopefully everyone has a Twitter account by now. If you just search for developer Twitter, so the stuff we did earlier wasn't absolutely necessary. I was just showing that you know you can that this server is actually somewhere on the internet and anyone in the world can actually access it and you can have a web page or whatever on it. All right, so if you search for developer Twitter, you'll get this web page. So make sure you're watching closely because there is a bit of link. The links aren't exactly clear for how you how you use this. So if you go down all the way to the bottom, there's this link that says manage your apps. And you click on that. And then you know sign in. 
And uh, yeah, I created an app earlier, but you can create another app. Create a new app, type in a name. And a description, and it can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, and the website can be whatever you want it to be, but it has to look like a URL. And just say, yes, I agree, and create your Twitter application. Now, if you have an outdated browser, this is not going to work. But if you don't, then it'll say, your application has been created. Please take a moment to blah, 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 blah. And it, and it works, and you have an application. And the reason you need an application is because the application gives you these sort of keys to access the Twitter API. So who did not follow what I just said? If anyone didn't follow what I just said, I can start and do the entire thing again. Just raise your hand if you didn't follow the Twitter developer. All right, so go online, Google search for Twitter developer, <coughs> hit the first link, all the way to the bottom, and see where it says manage your apps. Oops, that's zooming in too much. So manage your apps, just click on that. And it'll show you all the apps you have currently. And that should be none at all if you've never done any Twitter API development. So then you just hit Create New App. That button's going to be either top right or somewhere in the middle. And then just you know type in whatever you want. Uh, URL, description, uh, Okay, and then you just hit, you know, whatever, and yes, I agree, create your Twitter application, and bam, now I have another application. Okay, so did anyone still not get that? Alonzo? No, 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 no. Okay, great. So now that we have an app, uh, let's go to one of these apps that I have, and just take a look down here, it gives us a consumer key or an API key. Uh, this is one of the keys that we'll need. The other keys we'll need, we can find if we hit this tab right at the top where it says keys and access tokens. So if we click on this, while we're in our app management thing, uh, it'll give us a consumer key, a consumer secret, and then I don't think it gives you an access token. You have to click Create My Access Token. So it's just these four random you know, sequences of characters that are used for authentication. So if we click Create My Access Token, bam, now we have an access token, an access token secret. There might be a slight issue here. Let me take a look. Okay, so actually do not do, not do that yet. Hit Revoke Token Access. Uh -oh. Don't hit revoke token access. Go to <laughs> details and then hit modify app permissions. So right now, that token only would work at reading tweets and wouldn't actually work for sending tweets. So if we go to app, if we go back to details for your app, hit access level. Uh, access level. Modify app permissions. Make it writable. Uh, so how do we do that? Just read and write should be fine. And then we hit update settings. If you already created a token, um, uh oh. How about? Hmm. Okay. Whatever. Let's do that. So. You'll need a Twitter. So I wasn't able to get this API working right because of my browser. Could everyone uh, create an app on the uh, Twitter developer portal thing? Or did anyone have any issues with it? OK, great. So real quick, you'll have to add your phone for some reason to Twitter before you can send messages. Um, oh, there we go. Where are we? So uh, if you don't want to use your actual phone number, you can go to Google and create a Google Voice account. I'm not going to show you how to do that. All right. How do you add a number? So just log into Twitter regularly and then click here on your profile picture and then hit settings and mobile on the left. And then it'll ask you for your phone number and then it'll text you a verification code. 
And I think my phone doesn't allow short. Oh, okay. So it did work. <coughs> so please see that really quickly. We'll need to do that. Apparently, there's a change in the Twitter API where you are not allowed to send messages unless you have a phone number. And that's probably because people have been spamming the, you know, whatever out of it. Uh, all right, so I'm going to try getting this again. So read and write, update settings. And now it works. So let me just go really quick to this thing. Make sure you regenerate your access token. The thing that you had to click on to get these weird sequences of characters, the, se the second <coughs> set of weird sequences of characters, make sure you regenerate, because if you don't, those tokens only apply to the re you know, permissions. All right, so um, blah, 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 new access token. All right, is everyone still with me? Raise your hand if you're not with me. I'm waiting on Twitter. You're waiting on text, OK. Uh, is everyone is anyone behind that stage where they're still trying to find the page where you can add a phone number to your Twitter account? Yeah, what's up? Where, how do you hmm? how do you okay, here let me show you really quickly again. So, just go log into Twitter regularly, mm -hmm. and then hit this button right here, and then hit settings, and then hit on the left mobile. And you should be able to then add a phone number to your tour account. OK, anyone still struggling? Are you, have you not gotten the text yet? OK, why don't you try using my Google Voice number? Is it a Java thing? No. You see this number right here? This should be able to accept codes. Some phone numbers don't accept codes from uh, Twitter. So try that out. Yeah. So do that specifically. And then go back to your thing here. Yeah. And then go back to your thing here. Yeah. And you can call it like that. That was my notification. And then go to Kids. And then they're going to want to like make it run and spell. They visualize. Oh, OK. Yeah. 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 I'm really no, 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 no. Can't see the okay. water people. Yeah. Um, that's your yeah. Um, what's going on? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 Okay. So next up, we're gonna download a Twitter library that works in Python. Huh? that code? Oh, it says specifically it doesn't want to do a Mother. I had that, but then I tried again and it worked. So I used my cell phone. You're going to have to use somebody else's uh, tokens um, or hope that they sent you a text message. Any any clue yet? No. Anything happened yet? Did you get, did you get a text yet or anything like that? <laughs> 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 Give him your uh, your authority tokens. So all your tokens, you share it with him. You can both use them at the same time, but you'll be able to send half the number of tweets each. It's not that bad. You get like a hundred or something. Right. Oh my god. Like it says your phone's activated. Yeah. Oh, Did it work? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so don't worry about that. All right, so next up, we'll need to download a Python library that helps with you know using the Twitter API. So, but to search for Python Twitter library, we're going to use this one called Tweety, just because I've used it a bunch already. So. If you go to the first link, it's Twitter telling you about all the different libraries that they have, which includes just this one that they wrote in Java. But they also have a bunch of third-party libraries, and a bunch of them are in Python. So we're going to be using Python for you know this hectare. So Python 
And the first one is Tweepy. So we're going to go ahead and grab Tweepy on our server. Now, raise your hand if you do not are not logged into your server yet. You were logged into your server earlier. No, no, no. So, were you, are you still setting that up? You said you just got the email? He just got the email. Does he know the steps to set it up? Oh, okay. So, we'll get a dash pip. Yeah. Yes, I need to get so pip. Okay, so this is how you install pip. Search so to get this. <laughs> well, to get to use Tweepy, you're going to have to get a Python script that will help you download and install uh, different Python libraries. So. Raise your hand if, you, if you're not logged into the server. So you said you weren't, server. or are you? You just logged in. How do you get? You're not. Based in the link to that. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna oh, just put the instructions yeah, off to the right. So then you download it with WGET, get, and you do Python and get pip So if you just search online for get pip dot pi like that, search for it. And this first link should give you a link to a script. So make sure you're watching this. So this script right here will let you install pip. So pip's one of the things you'll need to install this Python module. So this right here, if you right click and hit copy link address, and go back to your server, and then type in this command right here, I'm going to type it over to the right, curl space the URL to that Python library, or sorry, to that Python script, and then space dash o and pip.py. And that just basically means download this thing from the internet. And uh, once you've downloaded it, dump it into that file. So for some reason, pasting isn't working on this. So it was working on my other laptop, but it's not working here. Uh, hopefully, you guys will get the paste. Um, all right, so now if we hit ls, we should have a file called kit.py in our directory. And if we want to run that, uh, we will have to run it with Python. So Python space kit.py. And it should. Uh, it should install it and that should work. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so you just go online again, search for, go to Google, search for uh, get pip.py. You just search for that. The first result should say installation pip 1.5.6 documentation. Hit that. And then there's a link to a script right here, which said, which is called get pip. Py. If you just copy that the link to that script and then go back to your console, um, go back to your server, and you type in curl, which helps you download stuff from the internet, space, you know, whatever the URL was. And again, you're gonna have to copy it because for some reason pasting isn't working. Hmm? Control shift V works. Control shift V works? Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, okay. Control shift V to paste. And then dash O space pip dot pi. And then if you type in ls again, with, and remember ls shows you everything that's in the current directory, it should show you pip dot pi. And to run pip dot pi, type in python space pip dot pi. Like this. And pip is Python's packet manager. It helps with uh, downloading and song packages. Great. So now we have pip. We should be able to install Tweepy, and we're getting one. <laughs> I think I thought about this like two days ago. I think I. <laughs> so I don't remember. I don't remember what I came up with. Dash U space the uh, 
a name for library, which is Tweepy, and it successfully downloads and installs it. Mm -hmm. Did everyone get that? No, I was thinking about the other one. Going about the files, the words. Oh, I couldn't think of it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Remember the one with like the Okay. The so, I, I just these three commands oh, right here oh, should download the script which will install yeah. pip for you and then use pip to install Tweepy. Is everyone, has anyone not reached this third step yet? Raise your hand, please. For like the first okay. part, yeah. Well, really what's your uh, we type in yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Did you type in Python yeah. pip dot pi? Yeah, I did that. And it says no such. <laughs> what does it say again? Yeah, that was the thing I wanted. If you wanted to easily find no, you don't care about figuring out and storing as fast as you can. Oh, yeah. The frequency that we consider good. Right. So that's what it's called. Hugo, I'll go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, I never forget. And then you don't know what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> you never was a big one. I don't care. Like, I was like, okay, now how does that work? And then I was like, wait. Williams, but yeah, I was I was thinking like the same thing. We could have three people use once at the top. Yeah. Oh yeah. These are actually just two different changes. Okay. So I'll run that and then run this Python. I'm still trying to be. He's a hacker. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Oh, that's who that guy was. Was it the guy that you had lunch with? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Then, no, I got I got totally different heroes of the lunch. Did you get like the media interview? Yeah. Yeah. No, you got interviewed by like three different teams. Right. But like toward here, toward your interest. I don't know. It's, it's just like so you can see where you are. Yes. And I, I didn't even yeah. get an offer for my own. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I got, I got so anybody like, having any issues one. still? Okay, great. So everyone should have Tweepy by now. So just to make sure you have Tweepy, open up a Python shell. Go to your command ship. Okay, uh, go to your you know servers, uh, SSH thingamajiggy, type in Python and hit enter and you should get these weird three arrows. Now we're in a Python shell, we can type in Python command and it evaluates and returns. So you know you can do whatever you want and have a lot of fun. Okay. Is everyone in the Python shell? Yep. So import Tweepy. If you don't get any errors, then that means Tweepy uh, works as a module. So now we're going to start using Tweepy. And the way we do that is we go to you know, back to uh, the Tweepy GitHub. Hopefully, uh, everyone hasn't closed that yet. If you have, just search online for GitHub space Tweepy, and then you should be back here. And if we go to examples, in the examples folder, there's a bunch of example scripts that show you how the library is used. So let's go to streaming. And there's a bunch of code, blah, blah, blah. But notice here what it says. It says consumer key, consumer secret, access token, access token secret. And that's all the stuff we grabbed from the Twitter API, or should have grabbed from the Twitter API earlier. Let's go and make sure to grab that. If 
from there right now. <laughs> so um, go open up any of these, you know, applications and keys and access tokens, consumers key. So this is my consumer key. Please use this key. Use your own. Use your own. And just sort of, uh, yeah, just sort of put all of these into a text file so that we can use them more easily. Note that this one has a little dash in the middle. The entire thing is your access token. Copy the entire thing. And has everyone done that yet? Has everyone put all of their tokens into a little text file for easy access? Yep. Raise your hand if you haven't yet, if you're still struggling with that. Uh, what's up? Can we go to the GitHub to get the, uh, what's it called, uh, to see these files together? Oh, don't worry about that yet. First, just uh, open up Notepad and just right. sort of put all these tokens into a Put all these tokens into a, into a text file. Okay. Yeah, what was up with uh, right there? Uh, okay, what about Mac? Hmm? What, what about Mac? What, what, what should I use? All right. We're all we're all using Chrome, so we're, it's all this happening in the browser. Okay. Okay. Just watch the live stream. Okay. Go back or ask Kunal to help you out. Okay. Okay, um, now that we have all of these weird, you know, sequences of characters and stuff, uh, we can use these in Tweety. So, again, to get to the Tweety GitHub, go online, search for Tweety GitHub. You know, open up, hit examples, and you get all these scripts that show you examples of Tweety being used. Um, Hold on a sec. Okay, yeah, Tweety being used. So I'm going to put this tab up here to the right and keep my sort of tokens down here and then try to do what this script is doing in the Python shell. So we imported Tweety already, but it asks us to import other things from Tweety. And so I'm going to go, you know, just copy what it says here from Tweety.streaming import stream listener. It should work. Uh, and all these other commands, you sort of control shift V, as someone said earlier very helpfully, will paste into, into this uh, thing you mentioned. All right. Uh, and then it, you know, has these little things which ask you to set your consumer key and consumer secret. So, We'll go consumer key equals quotation mark indicating this is a string. Copy this, copy your consumer key into there. And now we just you know set the variable consumer key to that string and do the same with each of these consumer underscore secret, access underscore token, access underscore token secret. Of course, they're all lowercase, do not make them uppercase, otherwise it won't work. So consumers secret equals quotation marks, copy the secret over. Oh, so to paste into this uh, console, do control shift V, and obviously to copy from somewhere else, do control C. Oh, is it too small for you? I just can't read. Uh, hold on, let me, no, well, you can't read. <laughs> I just messed with you. What's up here? Well, I can put it all into into a larger text file on the right. Because I have the tag row and I don't have the control shift. Uh, what do you mean? Are you using a different? No, 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 no. I'm talking about like the importing when you import things. Oh yeah. I can't get the GitHub file so Oh okay. Here, just go. What's happening when you search for GitHub Tweety? What comes up? Yeah. No, 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 just search for GitHub Tweety on Google, yeah, and it's the first link. Thank you. Yeah, no problem at all. And then hit examples, the folder examples, and then the folder or the file streaming.py, and that has all of these uh, in the image of these. That's it to copy and paste in. Great. Where is it? Sorry, it was in Tweety GitHub, server, you have to, and then examples, the examples folder, and then streaming.py. Yeah, 
Okay, so now you know. Let's set up so, yeah, all yeah, these variables. Uh, consumer yeah, secret and yeah, access yeah. token. I'll take the zero key. And make sure that <laughs> your access tokens or your app have read and write permissions, like I showed you earlier. If you're not sure what that is, raise your hand. Okay, great. Uh, I said make sure your app has read write permissions, which is one of the things you set while setting up the app. I think this one they call it access token secret. <laughs> okay, so now that we have those set up, should be able to run these uh, other commands. So let's go. Everything that's under if under our underscore underscore name equals underscore underscore main blah blah blah. This basically means if you run this script uh, by going Python space you know the script, then everything under here will run. Otherwise, you can import all of this stuff. So essentially, we need to copy paste these things into here, into our shell, to sort of see interactively what's going on. So let's go like, and you don't have to look at the screen because you should be able to just go to GitHub, or search for GitHub Tweety, and then go to examples, and then go to streaming.py. All right, so let's copy paste this right here. Uh, what? Oh, right. Uh, We'll have to copy paste this class first. Copy paste the entire thing at once, except it doesn't work. And I just screwed up my shell by doing Control Z. All right. <laughs> I can do this a bit faster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could, but it'll be easier to just do it in the right. All right. Uh, not line by line, just oh really? No, the class you don't want to copy paste line by line. Class I'm pretty sure you should be able to paste like that. Then the comments, right? Oh. Yeah, but remove the comments and turn you know the multiple spaces into single spaces. That should allow you to copy paste the entire thing in. But if we do it like this, it'll it'll make it easier to sort of add the other stuff we're trying to add soon. Uh, okay. Well. Uh, <laughs> what? Crazy I'm assuming the standard out with some random. If anyone's having any issues, raise your hand and who else wants to come and help us out? Do that yeah. first. Yeah, if you want to sign up, there's a live stream. Each one can kind of go through what he did step by step. You go to the first thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the first step is to go to the ocean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that. Uh, what? Oh, yeah. Hit enter again. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then if you go. So, who's having trouble with this bit right now? Anyone having trouble with this bit? Copy pasting stuff yeah. line by line. Before you get to the last line, though, the last line lets you essentially pick what keyword you're watching. So I'm going to watch Republican. 
And now what should happen is it should basically print all the tweets that come in that have the word Republican. It doesn't exactly print the tweet, it prints out all this other stuff with the tweet, so I'm just going to stop it real quick. This is one of the reasons why doing it in the shell is nice. You can just hit Control C and sort of edit the script on the fly. So if we look back here, this Python class explains what happens anytime it receives a tweet. So this function right here, def on data, is what is called every time a tweet comes in, and a tweet is represented by this object named data. Right now it's just printing it out, but what would be much better is if we print out just the tweet. So if we look here at this massive, so in Python it's called a dictionary. This massive dictionary, what's going on? Uh, let me just search for... You guys don't have to do this. I'm going to do this. And uh, OK, so this gives us a nice representation of, of what's going on in this Python dictionary. And so we look here, it says text, and it gives us text. Just in case you're 18 by 2016, here's a list of your options. No idea what that has to do with the word Republican, but Twitter thinks has something to do with that word. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit that class that we had earlier so that it, you, so that it prints out just the, um, just the tweet and nothing else. Sorry. What's up? Maybe Aaron is copying the thing. Uh, OK. Uh, uh, I'll help you with those errors. Uh, if you know. We're looking for a place to put in the strong code. So. OK, so, so we go back here. And then just this class is kind of messed up. So you're going to have to copy paste it in a different way. Try going. Um, so type that into Notepad and then copy paste that. Each of these is a space, and it should help you with copy pasting. What, what are you copy pasting in this messing up? Is it this class? Yeah, so copy paste it like this. So type this in and then copy paste that, and that should work. So I'm going to. I'm going to edit this so that it only shows us the tweet and not the entire tweet object. The tweet object you know, includes date and handle and, and all that other stuff that we don't need for now. So the way you do that is in, in Python, since this represents a dictionary object, a dictionary is like a hash map. So those of you know what a hash map is, you access whatever is in the text field by just going square bracket text. And now if we copy paste this in, this right here should print out just the tweet and nothing else. Uh, from everybody who uses the word Republican when we run you know, that stream listener. So I'm just going to paste this class in. And in look back here, it goes, we have to copy paste this entire thing, so I'm going to Actually, that cup basing each of those things line by line is kind of a pain. I'm just going to put each of those into a new function. We define a function in Python. I just go def, you know, name of your function, friends, and then colon, and then type, start typing it in. So you don't have to do this. You can just um, you just copy paste it line by line each of these things. Make sure that you copy paste this class in before you copy paste these things in line by line. Okay. So the way you copy paste that class in um, is now, don't actually copy you know, paste it, edit it so that it's a bit cleaner and copy paste it in like this. So edit that class so that looks like this and then copy paste that in. You should be able to copy paste the entire thing at once. You don't have to type it in line by line. All right, so. Uh, what are you guys doing for the? Put your hand over. Whatever you want. Uh, if you type in that, oh. the. I know. So just copy and paste the whole file. Okay. 
And Python is sensitive to spaces and tabs at the beginning of uh, yeah. at the beginning of the code. So make sure you don't put the wrong number of spaces in because that's what it uses to determine you know level of indentation. So whether it's in one function or another or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to have it do this again, and then like that. Blah, blah, blah. Let's make it track Obama this time. <laughs> and then now we're back at the Python shell with these you know, three arrow keys. And if I go F U N, go like that, and it's all this thing. Uh, and I get an error. <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, so that object, that, that data object, is actually not automatically a dictionary. It's a massive string. And so we'll need to turn it into a dictionary by using this library called JSONP. So we just import JSON. Or sorry, JSON. Should have gotten an email. Uh, and JSON is just a nice uh, format for storing like dictionaries and hash tables and things like that. So if we go online, search for JSON Python module tutorial. It shows a short tutorial for how to use it. So import JSON and then. And then json.load s. So, and that returns a dictionary. So, what we'll do is that class I had earlier, which I edited to show only the uh, only the text, I'm going to edit it again. I'm going to go json.load s this thing and then go like that. So, that should fix it. And now if I call the function fun again, now bam, we get all of these tweets by Obama. Or <laughs> not by Obama, but you know what I mean. People tweeting about Obama. All right, great. Now who's having issues? Here, I'll help you. Is there a copy of this thing? Oh, so yeah. Uh, uh, that's so cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 I guess I guess he has the magical. Yeah, because that's a sort of thing there affecting it with your mind. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> well, 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 Oh, yeah, you just ignore that because that's because I'm running it from a lot of And now I do Python. Maybe nobody's tweeting about flat pi. Yeah, I can't write that. Oh, you forgot the Oh, you forgot the Oh, you forgot the Oh, you the Oh, you the Nobody's tweeting about that. Yeah. 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 Ye
So it's not a chase, it's like a yeah. massive string which can be decoded. Yeah, I messed up. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now you want to Google get dash pi. So now it's right. Any issues? I'm doing the same as it was. I'm having issues with that if you want to know. Afterwards, I'm waiting for a month. Uh, yeah, so I still have to figure out the is it? Yeah, okay, so play on a bike and live up to 17 years. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, they're the only mammals. And they're like, no, no, they're the only mammals that like. Oh, somebody should have made a bike like this. Really? You can't have a bike like this. No, it's not as much as the blue pass. Okay. Now, you're going to find out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now you're entering. I know there's just. Okay, so now Google get dash pip dot i. So we can now probably something wrong with your uh Okay. And then you want to go to the first one and then copy the link. Copy something wrong with your glue. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, <laughs> um, what was it after that? You just, yeah. What did you guys do after you installed? <laughs> uh, so I have to like, no. up there. So I can guide you through it better, but it's like, yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? That's the copyright on uh, uh, gender class. So, yeah, after you do that, you just go into Python and just start using the example. Yeah, you can copy that. So now I can just, I do I have to do it in Python, or can I do it in the in the iPython? Oh yeah, you're gonna have to do it on the on the VM. On the VM? Yeah. So then you can get. Oh, you just have to wait. Okay. So I'm guessing it there, but yeah, well, you can do it. So. If you're in your user, you're signing into your account. Oh, you can do it. I think you can. So you can make that. So you could, I guess, if you wanted to, like every time somebody tweets about the lab. No, no, no. So that's a good one. Like you do, um, did you already do like the JSON that loads the data and then the text, the yeah. single quotes text. Mm -hmm. I did that, but it's not working straight there. Go ahead. It's still loading tweets, but it's not loading. Oh, uh, just the capital T. Yeah, it's just so over here. Yeah, yeah. So okay. this is like top level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm also, getting the air on. Do all this at Okay, so I just want to do this. Go. See you at checkout. Oh. 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 Homecoming with this yeah. shirt. Yeah. 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 Just oh. date. <laughs> So I'm changing the word. I've changed the word from basketball or something else. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Something about the day is verb. Oh, wait, um, let me, let me very, uh, <laughs> That's a good point. Another file. On this? If you go onto the VM, you just please stand up and edit the file on your VMs. Do you need help with anything? I think I need to this project. Okay, so I'm at this stage right now. Yeah, I Okay. and then you get 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 and then no, it's not. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, no limit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Actually, it works. That's really cool. Yeah. I use like shitty Is there a different tester? Can you ever I don't think Oh, yeah. 
Is it, uh, so it's definitely executing this method then, I think. Wow, Raylan ranks number one in the country. Yeah, I don't care about it. Uh, what's up? Do I need to define the class? Uh, yeah, you'll need to define the class from the example. Uh, you just type that out, and then instead of data, uh, replace it with uh, JSON upload. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's right up there actually. Everything that's highlighted, that's that's what needs to be in the class. So basically, that's actually really easy. Um, I have yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Y
for one in all. That means so they're um, they um, they need a copy of codes and cards. Oh, shit. We just checked out their access codes are definitely right. Are you... Why is there a space on the screen for me? Are you using some weird text? They didn't teach you that. So your phone was wrong. The TA did, though. Nice to be yours. Yeah, but I thought he was Oh, is this in the shop? Whoa. I'm sure it's not very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, it's like your lines. Everything's easy. This is so funny. You just put tab and cuts. I would much rather deal with tabs. That's why Python is on the script. There you go. There's an extra small tab. This is Alright, okay, now let's try to do all this code we can, but the easier way to do this is put all of this into a function. That way when you call a function, each of these things is called one that works. And then just like that. And it's very convenient to that you only roll to the bottom. You can try to do it yourself on your account. And so you have this or it's going to switch to something else. There's something back and forth, you're just like forgetting what it posts so much. No, I always do the same thing. But I mean, like, you mean, like, what's that? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
There's a Python module called OS, which will let us just write shell commands from Python. The way you get to that is you import OS in your uh, in your Python shell, and you go OS dot system, and then you can type in some command. So I'm just in quotation marks, meaning it's a string. It should run fine. So go OS dot system ls. We see that it says you know abc hello.txt pip.py. We're in the right place. Uh, and so what we're going to do is os.system pip that I think install dash u cyber bot. Let me see if that works first. Yeah, it looks like that worked. Uh, Oh, I forgot, but if you try doing import clever buzz, probably not going to work right now. Oh, work. Great. Okay. So, did everyone get that working? Which one of you didn't get that working? Where is this going? Let's do pip install. Huh? Where is this going? Clever buzz. Oh, this is in the Python shell that hopefully you didn't close because you already had some stuff defined in there that you don't want to use. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So, you don't need to do ls. You just need to go like that. Import clever bot. You don't need the import LS. You don't need the OS system LS. Uh, no, I don't need that. Oh, one cool thing about Python REPL for anybody who is done with the last bit of code. Once you type something and it's returned, if you, if you type in the underscore and hit enter, it gives you the last thing that it returned. So that lets you go like, I don't know. Um, so you have a bad string that you want to, where you want to get rid of all of the quotation marks. And if we go bad string, uh, we get this. We could do underscore dot replace, you know, dot this, this with nothing. And we still have some bad stuff, so we could go underscore dot replace. Uh, the dot with nothing, and maybe the oh, yeah. that thing with nothing. And now we have a cleaned up string, and we then could do you know bad string equals underscore, and then we type in bad string. So it's just a nice way that you'll be able to interact with the last thing that was returned, just using the underscore instead of uh, copy pasting it or whatever. All right. So does everyone have this stuff working? That did I, was everyone able to import Clubberbot? Mine. Mm -hmm. Did you get the Twitter thing working? Okay, that's fine. No, you could still have fun with Clubberbot. Uh, so import Clubberbot, and then right here it gives us an example of how to use Clubberbot. So. Let's say CB1, our first clever bot, clever bot dot clever bot. I'm going to copy paste this code into up here. And now CB1 is our clever bot object. And if we just go CB1 dot ask, you know, ask it a question, how old are you? Quite young. So that worked. Does everyone see that it says quite young? It's pretty small here, but it says quite young. But you can, you know, uh, just ask Cleverbot whatever questions you want. And I'm not sure, but I don't think you have to use anything other than the ask method. Do these even have uh do you to have a question mark? Uh I think I might have messed it up, not including question mark. Yeah. Um, you have a single quote and a double. Uh, so you have a accent and then a double and then a quotation mark instead of a quotation. Pretty sure it's two quotation marks. And try typing in something else. Well, whatever, I'm pretty sure if we just go like this, it'll fix it. 
So I can like command n and Okay, maybe there's some kind of other stuff that we need to do. So I'm going to take a look okay. at the. Uh, <laughs> <It's even talking. laughs> so the spam. So there's some. Global name true. Oh, and Python has to be capitalized. Uh, oh, weird. Okay, so just going, you know, dot ask and then whatever the stuff is, it'll uh, give you a meaningful the response. The the so let's go to Twitter, just regular Twitter, and try to see what it does when we copy paste somebody's tweet and see if it makes any sense. Oh, whoa. So it might make sense to first clean up the people's tweet before we send it to Cleverbot, so that it's sort of shorter. Yeah, I'm and not sure if you can redefine classes in the REPL layout. Huh? Like, you can what? I was trying to tell okay. <laughs> So maybe we'll do something like, maybe we'll do something like, um, include the, I don't know, uh, first hundred characters that are all letters or spaces. And Cleverbot should be able to handle things that it doesn't understand by just ignoring them. Uh, so in Python, a method like that. Okay. Uh, so, whoa. All right, uh, Cleverbot should be able to handle stuff like so in Python, the way you deal with only having parts of a string and only having like you know, certain characters, yeah. you can do this crazy oh, yeah. math. You, can just, you just do uh, double you close it in double quotes, and then you can just use the apostrophe uh, one way. You can do either one. I'm very used to writing very long Python lines, so hopefully this is not too intimidating. Easiest way to do. The right way to do this is to use a regular expression. This long thing, I and mean, hold on, I will not ask you to copy this because you'll probably make a mistake. We'll just clean up a string and take maybe the first 150 characters. Or let's say. Hundred characters, so it does it to some variable string. And so if we go here and just go like def clean string, it should work here. And so if we go clean and then type in some la 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 la. And then in the middle, hello, my name is Hal. It doesn't do anything because we can ask to return. <laughs> so, uh, so, bam. now let's. So, if you hit the up arrow, that sort of goes to the last line that you typed in. And so, here it cleaned it up. And you know there were some spaces earlier. It sort of has this thing, but then says hello. My name is Hal. Maybe if we put that into Cleverbot, Cleverbot will be able to figure out how to respond. So let's see if that works. <laughs> so Cleverbot said, your name is Rachel. So it sort of has something to do with what the person's saying, and it sort of makes English sense. So we're just going to go with it. All right. Now what we want to do is reply to this person on, uh, on you know, Twitter every time they mention a certain word. 
And at this point, it's <laughs> 10 p.m., so we're pretty much done uh, with, you know, a, a few things. Hopefully you learned some stuff. I'll continue, but, you know, if you want to leave, we're mostly, we're, we're done in terms of whatever official BS stuff. Okay. <laughs> But I'm, I'm going to keep going and show you how to turn this into have, actually replying to these people and then actually giving them this, you know, English seeming response. Um, some of them will get upset, but <laughs> it'll be fine. Okay. So this is going to reply from like our Twitter accounts or what? Yeah. So this will reply from our Twitter account. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so if you have some kind of social reputation, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, oh wait. Uh -huh. you, you guys are using. Okay. Uh, don't use your own Twitter account. Make another fake Twitter account. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might also get bad. What if I just wanted to retweet stuff? Yeah, you can totally just retweet stuff. Um, there's uh, all, all of the stuff is inside the Tweepy docs. For our, so Tweepy makes it super easy to you know. All these different things. Um, I'm forgetting what the code was to send a tweet. <laughs> so try looking through the Tweaky API and figuring out where that methods called that sends a tweet. Uh, forgetting what it was called. I think it's just dot send. Okay, update status, that's what it is. Um, and it will basically uh, update uh, your update status means pretty much tweet, right? In, in Twitter API land, that's what update status means. Okay, so if we go back to here or back to where we had that example code, uh, we do have this auth right here, auth this object. So let me just zoom in here. This object auth, we should be able to call it with auth.set something, like set status. So I'm going to try and do that right now. Auth.set status. Hi, what's up, world? I am not a bot. Okay, uh, and it does not have. All right, well, screw you. Okay, hold on. I think, it, I think it might be BP status. Nope. Let's this again. Oh, update status. Oh, sorry. And again. Hmm? I don't think that will work there regardless. It doesn't have that. Okay, so API. Tweepy API. I think the thing is you're meant to create something else for a stream and for a for accessing the API. So we go from Tweepy import API. Yeah, that worked. And then uh, API, and then start it with auth. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so I'll I'll write this up in the text doc in a bit. But API equals API auth, and then just update status. Yo, this is I don't know um, green bot. Bang, I think that will work. Let's see if that works. This is also my per personal account. Yes, it turns out it did work. Uh, let's see. Does everyone see that? 
<laughs> okay, great. So now let me write down how I did that on um, Notepad doc on the right. So this is how we did the whole clever bot thing. And so now if we go from Tweepy, import API, and then that op object we had earlier, we go, you know, our API object off. That off, this off again comes from earlier from the GitHub uh, code that we copy pasted. So this right here, it's an OAuth handler which takes the secret and blah, 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 and you set the access token and all that stuff. So after you've done the set access token, then you can do this. So API auth, and then on the API object, you can call the method update status. And in here, whatever you pass it, gets updated as your, you send out as a tweet. So what we're going to do is we're going to write some code to respond. So you, you should all try this out right now. Just make sure it uh, actually sends out a tweet from your bot account. Why did it work without you having to log in with your credentials? Because I had already set up the auth object earlier. So that only works for your account. So yeah. how would you get it to log into account, to other accounts? If you set up the auth and log in? Well, you probably should have already gotten you know your own codes and all that stuff, yeah. all those tokens that you got. Those are associated specifically with the account you got them from. Okay. So you yeah, did. So you did. How do you do it for like um, what they access? Like, I have other people log in and you do service. Oh right. Uh, there is a whole like a, way. A, a whole another way to do that. You can ask yeah. Twitter. You, somebody can log into Twitter uh -huh. and then they get their own access token and access token secret, okay. and uh, then they give you something to do with their access token and some. Like well, private things associated with their secret, and then you can post on their behalf. So the consumer keys for the application and the access token is for the user. Do you want to I yeah. think so. <laughs> oh, sure that, yes, that way around. And then you know, they can uh, you know, log into your app or whatever, and then your app receives a uh, callback on URL that gives you their credentials or something related to them that you can use to you know, authenticate them and send tweets on their behalf or whatever. Thanks for the new account. Yeah, no problem. Okay, did everyone get the update status thing working? This is like a first tweet. Yeah, uh, uh, update status doesn't work because it says that it thinks my Twitter is botting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's it's your Twitter account. Huh? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you probably get banned, so make a new Twitter account. That's the way to get around it. Just Why do they give the spy? Iron at its finest. Iron at its finest. I mean, not really. They have, no, they have pretty good. At its finest. Okay, yeah. They have pretty good uh, bot detection stuff. Well, this happened when I was actually just trying to send a regular message like an hour ago. Oh. <laughs> I haven't used this Twitter account in like a year. Okay, okay. If you make a new one, it probably will work though. It do I have to make a new? Do I have to reset auth and, auth and stuff? Yeah, you'll have to get a new get new tokens and stuff. Um, and I'll just walk the rest of this. <laughs> What's up? Somebody was asking something. Sorry. What's, what's the whole point of the whole Twitter API? If you can't bottle anything. <laughs> you can. You just don't have to be too obvious. So if you send like um, uh, like every you know one hour you tweet, you're fine. You're never going to do anything as long as it looks sort of like English. And just build a bunch of followers, start following people. It'll be really interesting. If somebody just had, you know, their server running, running a script, which just every once in a while, every like seven or eight hours, creates a Twitter account, gets it to follow some of the other Twitter accounts, and has them all sort of, you know, <laughs> validate each other and send <laughs> like real English to each other. A social network of bots. A social network of bots, and then you can do all kinds of crazy things. So one really crazy thing is. Um, there are these, you know, really uh, whatever people on uh, Wall Street who think that if you uh, watch uh, sentiment on social networks, you can predict what the way you know prices will move. And there's like a huge thing about it in 2011, 2010. Uh, a lot of people were very excited about it. Right now, it's mostly dead, but maybe maybe it's still sort of a lot of people are doing it. I'm not sure. And what they would do is basically like watch Twitter, you know, scrape Twitter, 
and see every time the word Apple comes in, you know, look at its sort of context, look at all the words next to it. You can like have a little list that tells you these are all negative words, these are all positive words, figure out how many negative, how many positive. If Apple appears in a bunch of negative words, okay, suddenly Apple stock you know, might go down, that short Apple, whatever. But what's interesting though is if you had a bunch of Twitter bots, you could actually influence the market versus just trying to predict which way it's going to go. If you had a whole bunch of Twitter bots, like 10 to 20,000, they all suddenly started tweeting about Apple in a very negative way. <laughs> you created them like this, they all look legit, and yeah, you could uh, maybe, I don't know. I have a friend who said, he knew somebody who did this, but I'm not, not sure that it's actually true. They actually made a bunch of money off of like, having these Twitter bots and Facebook bots and have them make it look like people hate Apple or love Apple. That's specific instance, but not actually. Um, what's up? I'm having issues. Do you want me to write this thing that will reply to people and have them? Yeah. Okay, really quick then. Okay. So first of all, this script is not working. Which one? The STD output. Global name true true is starts with eighteen. I, I defined it again. I deleted it and then I redefined it. You redefined true? I mean, it's not not true, dude. The class. Because <laughs> in Python you can define true as false and false as true. Well, I do that. <laughs> what? Next time. Yeah, you can say true equals false, and then from then on, if you say if true, that means if false. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, this, this other object is working on it. All right, well, let's just finish this. Okay, we'll we'll talk about that. Yeah, sure. Okay, so let me write some code that'll, you know, just reply to everyone and with some clever bot response. So this update status method also takes a, a recipient, and that means it, uh, you know, will allow you to like specifically you know add someone you know say something otherwise you're just sort of tweeting it to to no one and that's kind of lame right because they will never actually see it okay so if you look at allowed params it gives us a in reply to status id and so we'll need to get the status id of that tweet that we grab in the stream um let me go grab so right here, this thing should have a, uh, you know, uh, this data thing should have a status ID associated with the tweet along with some text, right? So if we go back, um, let's see, where was that JSON thing? Whoa, okay, right here. This should give us like a, ID. Okay, so it's just ID, and that gives us that gives it to us as a long, you know, integer. Oh, this is so weird. You do you all see this? Just me or ID and ID underscore string are different. No, <laughs> this. Oh wow. Has a four at the end instead of a zero. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, I'll just go with ID underscore string for now. Okay, so. So here we can just say tweet, you know, ID equals, uh, oops, I had this in my basement for some reason. Okay, so tweet ID equals JSON data, and then at ID underscore string. Now uh, we need to call. Hopefully we have an API object defined up here, and we'll call API object update status, and we'll put the status in here. Actually, let me just take a look, oh, not here. Let me just take a look at this thing again to see the right way to call API update status. Um, okay, so it takes a status and then it takes inner by status ID. So update status, and then we'll say status equals, and up here let's, we'll fill in what our tweet is later, but up, so status equals our tweet in reply to 
status ID equals that tweet ID we had up there. And that should reply to that person, whatever we put into this string, our tweet. And we'll also print you know, uh, what they tweeted. And then let's also print what we tweeted. Something and then let's put a bunch of new lines so we can see. Uh, all right, so we would go our tweet is our tweet, right? Now, what we tweet, we want it to be in response to you know whatever they said, and we'll use Cleverbot to uh, come up with a response. So maybe I think it's best to define a new Cleverbot each time because Cleverbot was acting weird when we tried to call it more than once in a row. So cleverbot dot cleverbot. If you try to ask, if you try to ask them the same thing, um, it will reach it like an array null exception. Or something. Yeah, yeah, that thing. And even if you try to ask it a different thing. Um, we're not trying to ask it a different thing, so long as the first word wasn't the same. Oh, well, the fine. first word. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm just gonna you know call it a new each time. So cd one dot ask, and then we. We want to ask it, you know, whatever the clean version of whatever the other person said. But so I have this method called clean. I'll post this all in paste in so that you all can, you know, copy paste it versus uh, type it in from here and then, you know, do whatever you want with it later. Um, so we're going to ask it the clean version of its tweet, right? And yeah, that should be our tweet. And update yeah, our status with that. And that should work, but it probably won't because it never does. So we'll fix it once it does. Um, OK, so let's define this clean function. Let's, we needed uh, Cleverbot again. I think we already have Cleverbot that may as well be safe. And we need an API object to be API and initialize with Hoth. Okay, yeah, that worked. Um, and then let's go like this again. The entire thing in again. And now we'll need to run whatever stream uh, here. So that thing, and then we'll start a stream with that off and that thing. And then anybody who talks about Obama gets a response <laughs> from Cleverbot. Let's see if that works. Oh my god, it's working. And I'm gonna I'm about to get banned, so I'm gonna close it really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh beautiful, but I don't know if oh it's it wasn't in response. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I got extra followers. Whoa, okay, hold on. Um, people just started following you randomly? Maybe people from here, I don't know. Or maybe just random people. <laughs> Other <laughs> maybe they're botting following. <laughs> also, on the end of each one, you should write hashtag cleverbot loves you. So can you put like a so that I definitely get that. <laughs> can I do what? You put like a delay after each one. Or something. Yeah, I was going to do that. Um, okay, hold on. This is also all going to my Facebook account. Double <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so something went wrong there, where the in response to status thing didn't actually work. Uh huh. Oh, what the heck? What's going on here? Oh, okay. Here, let's try doing that again. Okay, I'm just going to debug this really quick. Ah, this will be faster. Just make sure that when we go um, here, we'll 
print out JSON upload data. Oh, okay. I'm just guessing that it's this. Remember how the string was different from the ID? I'm guessing it's just that. Let's hope it's actually just that. We'll just cast this as a string because I'm expecting the API expects it as a string. And then just sort of copy paste that in again. And let's see that works. So to run that, we'll need to again create a new instance of this streamer thingy by like going L equals that. And then uh, stream equals that. Oh, let me just scroll up. And then stream dot filter that. And then just bam. And let's see if this works. Oh my god. Yeah, bam again. Okay. I have gotten that in Twitter. <laughs> okay, let's see if that works. Mm. Looks like it's not working. You know what we could do? We could grab their username and then in the tweet just put an at so that at least they see it and then at their username. So if we look here, uh, does it give us a username for this person? Huh. It doesn't. Can you expand the user? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, it gives us a screen name, and that should be confirm. Yeah, it looks like this is the dude who talked about Republicans. Just in case you're 18 by 2016. Yeah, that's him. Okay, so if we just go. Um, then instead of having R tweet be this, oh, this is way too big. Okay, instead of saying it's in reply to status ID, let's say that our tweet is just that. This is really bad to write everything on one line, but it's something I do a lot. That's the list. Um, screen name. Plus that. Let's just put a little at symbol. Let's see if this works. Actually, running that fun function from earlier should do everything we wanted to do. Shouldn't have to do anything else. <laughs> read, uh, read. Well, okay, I think that will work. I'm pretty no. sure it worked. Oh, you didn't put space. Oh, I didn't put a space. Yikes. Oh, no. But this, some like of the responses device. were super funny. <laughs> 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 Better, let's see what that was in response to. Oh. <laughs> my regroups with allies, blah, 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 blah. But, but one of them was really funny. This one was really funny. <laughs> I fully understand the persecutor's concern. <laughs> 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 I 
and then I go, of course I understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, that works. Let, let me put a space in here really quick. And then, Wait, what did you say? Of course I understand. Do you understand? And actually have it running all the time. Yeah, you could just have this thing running. So can, do you know how to do the delay thing? The what? The, the delay, delay Yeah, yeah, here. Um, you can make it every, like, 10 minutes or something. <laughs> Hold on, let me run like this first. So the thing, if we if we actually want to have this thing just run in the background, if we have to do more than just delay it, we probably want to like, if we close this shell while the Python shell is running, whatever running the Python shell is also gonna go uh, off, right? We want it to be running as like a background process on the server. And that's pretty easy to do. I'll, I'll show you how that's done in a bit. Let me just try to do this and, and let's see if it, See this works. I should have lots of karma with Twitter though at this point, so it's I don't expect to actually. Okay. I don't know. Okay. They were <laughs> Whoa. What? The <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna stop this and we're just gonna refresh. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. Has a new nickname for Obama. Yes. <laughs> okay, these are, I think I'm, because I'm searching for Obama, I'm getting all kinds of crazy. <laughs> Obama hug and kiss nurses treating all patients. Hello. And then it says, hello, I'm Anja. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, look, what is your birthday of President Obama? Do you hate him or like him? <laughs> yeah, that's, I think that's what I'm going to do. like respond like some like huge paragraph. Huh? He's probably going to like respond like a huge paragraph to you like this photo. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, so more people are following me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put this code up so that all of you can run it. Um, here, so it, it's just basically defining a new stream and then defining this clean function and creating an API object which uses, so as long as we as long as you have that stuff from earlier, this stuff should work too. Uh, okay, where do I put this? I'll uh, post this in the Facebook uh, events page. Is that, is that fine for everyone? Yeah. Great. Just look at that Facebook. Oh, whoa. Uh oh. So if we were to make that a dot Python file. Mm -hmm. Dot py. It would work. Just make sure all that stuff you typed earlier in the shell goes on top before so you run this? The, the declaration of class STD out or something like that? Well, no, uh, we imported stuff from Tweety. Oh, yeah. oh okay, yeah. yeah. Just I'll everything that you import? Yeah, yeah. everything you import, <laughs> and then we also declared <laughs> off and have those tokens, and other than that, everything else should be fine. I'm, I'm gonna turn this into a Python script right after this. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, but first, I'll put this on a Facebook like, event page. Actually, can everyone just copy paste this paste bin link? I'll just put it, make it really big. Uh, it's not too hard. That has all the code in it. That'll make your Twitter account start applying to random people. And you know, once you start freaking out, they're going to get banned. Just take control C. After like five or six tweets, take control C. As long as you have that stuff in the shell from earlier. Oh, yeah. That's 
That's where we find the money passing around. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. While you're doing this, I'm going to turn this into a script. Just make sure everything else that we needed from earlier is in here. And then I'll post it on the Facebook group so that our Facebook What's event the page. What's the number? Oh, sorry. Uh, hold on. There. Why did you just post on GitHub? Uh. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe. Consider it. So much easier just put on paste then. <laughs> You're giving the people the power to control people on Twitter. Come on. It's a huh? worthy cause. What? It's a worthy cause to give people the power to troll Twitter whenever they want. Put it on GitHub. I have no idea how to like do that quickly. Okay. So hopefully everyone has that basement and stuff running. I'm gonna start getting this thing working. Is it working? Your yeah. Facebook also has the statuses you posted. Yeah, that's what I figured. I haven't deleted those yet. Uh oh. People are liking it. What? People are liking it? One person liked it. Yoshi Fujimoto. Yo, this is Greenbox. Oh, okay. Okay, this should be a Python script that if you run you know, just does this and asks you for, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? What keyword should we troll? And it will just troll that. So we could do this entire, make sure it's set up in Python. We'll also need to import public bar. And JSON. What? Oh, you're not talking to me. Get rid of the green uh, button block card. Which is the one down? This one? This one? Um, okay, so. And get rid of your tweet. Um. What was all the stuff we had to do to import to get Tweepy working? We had to get pip, right?
Can't remember. Uh, once you crawl that, run that, run it, now we have to hit. So what is pip? Pip is Python's package manager, so it makes it very easy to download and install Python modules. Okay. And anyone can publish a Python module that gets this. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Okay, I think this script should work no matter what your machine is like. Go down right here, check on the Does anyone see any issues with this? You just make it a function of the consumer thing. What? You just, you just make a function, just take some of the values for the consumer and the other things that you have to define on the script. So you just execute it on Python or Linux. I uh, mean, yeah, that's what I did. So right now it just does that for the uh, keywords at the end so they don't have to type in the tokens. Um, okay, great. I'm going to put this into paste first and then try to make sure it actually runs as a script. Okay. Oh shoot! You and uh, whoever uses this will need to obviously edit the script to put their own tokens in. That's what I said. You want to just want to like make it a function so that you can just say takes in these arguments and you just. Oh, you mean like from the command line? Yeah. That would that would be slightly better. I would, I think. Yeah, that's nice. Why, why is the length of the argument five? Uh, because the first one's always the name of the actual script. Oh, okay. So I define this method here. It's called here. And uh, Okay, um, so I have another argument called self, and then uh, I'm going to call self. So why do you have to put self as an argument? That's just the way Python so works. Anytime you, you call a method from an object, oh, you have to do it self because you don't use a static argument. Exactly, yeah. So it passes its own, the, the instance you call it from, it passes that in. And uh, you can do stuff with that, like set variables or call other methods on that. Are you pasting? Are you putting the paste bin? I'll put it on the last one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just finding it's not that class anyway. Yeah. Okay. And then that will need to be the Yeah. Okay, thank you.
Okay, let's we'll work. The scripts working. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I don't work. <laughs> What's so funny? All the responses it's making to all the different tweets. This is hilarious. I mean, if you really want to test it, you should just have someone tweet something, and then have the, uh, and then have your club at, with a specific word in that your clever body. That's what it's doing right now. So it's looking for. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. But like, other so it doesn't get flagged for botting. Like, have a random word. Well, okay. The way we'd make it not get flagged for botting is just have it wait a bit. Um, and every single time. time. Now, not random. The right way to do it would be to import time at the beginning, and then go like last time no. zero, and then have last so, time so, just be the last time we tweeted something. And compare it every time, and if it's more than a certain amount, and set it. You right. what I'm saying. Every right. time we tweet. Right. If time dot time minus last time is more than sixty, so time elapsed is more than sixty seconds. Let's change that to maybe one twenty seconds. Or sorry, if it's a little less, nice. then we just return true. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, we set right before we turn true, we set last time to time dot time. Mm. Over here, we should probably also print still waiting or something like that. Cool. Nano script dot pi. Paste that in. Close it. And let's. We need to run it. This script needs to be run with uh, consumer token, access tokens, blah, 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 and the arguments. So you need to change the script to script 2.5. You are right, sir. Thank you. And America. Local variable reference before assignment. Um, that means we're doing some weird scoping stuff. We never do this in real life, but I'm just going to make it global variable. Wait, where's the airline? Yeah, oh. What should we do this in real life? Because any script that imports this will have the same thing in their okay. globals. So anytime they go, what was last time, they'll get this instead of what was declared in maybe another scope. If it was declared in the local scope, then they wouldn't get it. Well, it just yeah. generally really bad practice, but anything in globals. Normally, you would access it by going name of the module dot, you know, local time, or last time. Whereas if you go like this, and you just go last time anytime anyone imports it. It would be in your namespace. You might spell it wrong or something. Okay, let's this see if that works. works. Okay, yeah. It worked and it does all the rate limiting stuff. Thank you. It's going to make two minutes. Hmm? Yeah, it's going to keep printing this for two minutes. Well, whatever, it's just a hack. Uh, obviously, it would be much nicer if it just printed out once and then stopped and then waited, you know, versus printing it out so many times. But. Awesome. Now this right here, you should be able to just dump onto a server, 
long as you run it with the you know tokens, it should start trolling the keyword that it'll ask you for later. Um, so let me put that on. So if everyone wants to try that just to make sure it actually works, that would be perfect. So this isn't the service, huh? You don't make the service. Oh, uh, this is a Python script, so you can run a Python script in the background. So you want to try doing oh. that? So all you do is just do the Python, and then Python it's the Python script, and it just runs in the background of the server. Uh, no, uh, it won't run in the background. It's still running your shell. Here, let me look. Uh, run process in background Linux. Okay, I, I so see. right here, no HTTP space, and that Python thing, then space, then and. So let me do that right here. So now it's like, it should be running, I think. Unless exit one means it's not running. Well, it wouldn't have run because uh, it asks for some input, right? So we probably want to type some. So now we have this thing that's just running in the background. We can't kill it. We're waiting for that input. So we want to. It asks for. Remember how it asked for uh, the name of the keyword? I don't know if you saw the script, but it asked for the name of the keyword. So I'm just going to echo that keyword in so that it actually does something. Wow. So now this should be running, but I'm not sure if I go to my Twitter account. I want to kill these. Yeah, seven <laughs> seconds ago it uh, really tweeted cool. something, so it's working. Oh my god, now I'm getting tweets back from <laughs> Yeah, I was pretty back. Yeah. Someone just tweeted at me saying, do you live in California? Like what? <laughs> well, Someone would be I mean, yeah. You probably said something like threatening to him or something. Threatening to her. And then what did it say? It said, do you live? Oh, I sent someone a tweet saying, do you live in California? <laughs> but then he just repeated me and sent it back. <laughs> do you live in California? Oh. I don't know what's going on, man, but I uh, yes. <laughs> so funny. The robot is turned into the new harmony. Yeah. <laughs> so now if I get out of the server, it's still running, and my Twitter account is going to be posting these random tweets every two minutes uh, because we use that no HTTP thing. So I'll mention that in the Facebook post also. Uh, I will kill that server soon, though. So. So the one easiest way to get rid of it is to just kill the server by going to DigitalOcean and killing it. If you don't have access to the DigitalOcean panel because maybe Kunal sent you an email about it instead of you actually logging into the server, then probably the easiest way to get rid of it is to, I don't know, it's hard. You have to like, oh, you could just reboot the server. You go in and you go sudo reboot. or will reboot the server and it won't be running. Anymore. When you kill the DigitalOcean server and you start it again, does it charge you another $5 or what? No, no, so it charges you $5 per month, and they charge you that on an hourly basis. So $5 divided by the number of hours in the month. So if you spin it up for an hour and then spin it back down, you're not charged $5. You're charged less than a cent. Less than a cent, yeah. No, it's 0.007 cents an hour. Well, you charge a cent. Sorry, $0.007 an hour. So less than a cent. Two hours? OK. A cent? Yeah, two hours definitely a cent, yeah. Uh, so will it automatically bill my credit card after my money runs out if I have the server running? Uh, yes. So if you want free credit, you can get $100 of free credit through the GitHub Educational Pack thing I mentioned at the beginning. Okay. Just search for GitHub Educational Pack online. Um, it gives you $300 to total ocean credit. If you want more than that, just go to any hackathon and talk with a person who has a digital ocean t-shirt. 
and say, I love DigitalOcean, can you give me more credit, and I'll just give you like $80 of credit. Wow. I have like $100 something credit, wow. so yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And you probably just run like the $5 ones? I have one $5 one that's hosting like some really weird websites like this one. I don't know if it's actually working though. Can you use GoDaddy.com to also host uh, URLs? Um, GoDaddy doesn't actually give you hosting. I mean, they probably do, but it's probably really crappy because you don't have like full control over you know what's going on 